What's going on, guys? What's going on? Yeah, a lot of interesting stuff has happened. It's funny. As soon as I come back, all the good stuff starts happening for EOS. You know, what a coincidence. <laughs> um, no, but, uh, you know, Google have an interest in EOS. Google Cloud, well, it's the same. Google, Google Cloud is, is one big company. Um, for them to have any participation in EOS is pretty big. Now, how it's going to play out, I'm not really sure. You know, the whole block producer thing is um, still an issue. <laughs> still an issue. I, I left, I come back, it's still an issue. So, um, yeah, I'm not really sure exactly uh, how that one is going to play out. But I think, I think it's just over time, it's just going to evolve into into what we all thought yeah should be i don't think it's uh going to happen overnight i think it's just going through these growth phases and none of us are liking it <laughs> i hate it i don't like seeing uh, uh colluding and block producers voting each other and i don't like that as of right now it, it does kill the chain it the price of eos is two thousand fifty. i looked at the price of eos i think a year ago or something uh on my uh portfolio and it was like the same same price, two dollars and fifty cents. I'm like, wow. Um, yeah, we haven't really budged much, but uh, it, it stuff has been building on it, and uh, it's it's. And I know this is gonna be one of those things that a lot of people feel a certain type of way about what I'm about to say, and, and some people are against it or for it. Um, I'm just speaking my thoughts. Um, throughout the whole lifespan so far of EOS, you know, I've, it's been a bummer to see uh, Block One playing uh, such a standoffish approach. I think we all understand. At least for the beginning, why you know SEC and regulators, we we understood that, um, but now that's kind of out the wind, out the window at this point. You know, I would love to see Block One more engaged in the community. Um, and what made me kind of really start talking about this, I just seen a, an advertisement, or I don't even know what it was. I don't know if it was advertising. I don't know exactly what they were trying to uh, promote or sell, or what. I'm not sure. I just know I was on uh, YouTube watching some video. I don't even think it was crypto related. And I see Vitalik talking about Ethereum, uh, the, the Ethereum scale. I, I'm pretty sure a few of you guys seen the little uh, advertisement um, while, while you're watching YouTube videos. I wish that could be Dan. I understand some people aren't like that. They're not uh, outspoken. I get that. But that's kind of what you need in this crypto space. And I know Dan and Brandon is not trying to be the leaders of EOS. They're trying to keep it as decent, uh, decentralized as possible. Uh, but let's be frank, I don't think there is any project that's decentralized, even to the point of Bitcoin. Even Satoshi was involved with Bitcoin for the first few years, two, two and a half years, he was heavily involved in Bitcoin and staring the ship to where it needed to go. And then he just disappeared. I think every project had some sort of figurehead trying to steer the ship to the right direction. And uh, EOS, EOS doesn't really have that. Um, and I think that's why there's such confusion, such uh, misunderstanding and uh, colluding and all this. Because technically by code, yes, there is nothing in the code stopping anyone from colluding. Um, but I think if we had more of a figurehead, someone to say, hey, this is the best path. I think a lot of people, even block producers, would um, take a look at it. I'm not saying they would stop colluding, but at least they will uh, understand what the path is. Uh, for EOS, and a lot of us is kind of unsure, to be honest. Um, you know, it, it, at the beginning of mainnet launch, a lot of us were anticipating thousands of dApps being built on EOS. Um, fortunate, unfortunately, we've seen uh, the lack of hype surrounding it, and that's to be expected. There has been a lot of, uh, I, I, I want to use the word hiccups, um, but it's kind of like, what do you expect when you launch a chain? when it, it, it's we a lot of the things it was in the unknown let's just be frank let's just go back in time i'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. it let's just be frank we didn't know where we had to build the governance none of us did i certainly didn't maybe that might have um shifted my way of investing in it in, in eos maybe i would have took a little bit of a different approach investing in eos at least for me i thought and i think a lot of other people thought that the governance was already set to go we wouldn't have to create the, the governance day one. I think that was the hiccup for EOS at the beginning and even up until now, because we had to scramble and create some constitution <laughs> out of the whim. No one had any clue that we were going to have to do all this. 
I maybe had a slight hint that we might have to tweak some sort of governance, but not to the point where we have to literally create the governance day one before we can even launch the chain. That was crazy. Um, I, I wish we would have had a heads up, so maybe we could have pre-planned uh, before the ICO ended, kind of had a structure on what we, how we could go about this. So that way, today, year 2020, uh, we want to have the colluding and stuff like that. So this kind of brings me full circle with um, Google jumping on board. I'm not really too sure, and it's getting dimmer in here. Uh, that's that's the season for you <laughs> down south. It gets dark, then it gets bright. Um, as far as Google jumping on board, I'm not really too sure how that's going to play out. Um, it, I mean, I'm excited about it. I, it just shows that EOS made it to a stage where it's recognized as something serious and not just like a gimmicky shitcoin, basically. Um, I think a lot of people at, at, for a while started to second guess their portfolio. <laughs> um, you know, and let's, I'm going to be frank too, even me, at some point, I started, when I started seeing dApps kind of not being built on it, going to other EOS.io chains and, um, and just going to other chains in general, you know, at the beginning of the hype, it was right when the ICO ended, it was just tons of talk and people trying to build. And then we got to this gray zone where um, it wasn't really happening. I started to see every day I would be on uh, Telegram and just see stuff about DAP Network, Liquid DApps, um, Vulgar. Uh, Vulgar? I, 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 listen, I'm coming back into the game. So if I mispronounce it, sorry. <laughs> um, and just uh, just a few just a few dabs. It wasn't like a whole ton of dabs like how it used to be, um, and it's mainly because of the governance. A lot of people got shy because of the governance, so they decided to either make their own chain and, or just jump to a whole new blockchain. So with Google coming into this, it's going to be kind of interesting because we still haven't really resolved that whole um, colluding thing. But I have a feeling. This is just the growing pains. It's just weird. I, it's almost like how Satoshi uh, envisioned bl uh, Bitcoin at the very beginning. We all have this vision of Bitcoin. Everyone um, ran a node and keep it decentralized. If you go back and Satoshi Nakamoto's uh, um, Bitcoin talk, he didn't really want Bitcoin to be where everyone ran a node. Um, he wanted companies to actually run nodes. And I think this is kind of where EOS is going to start to go. I think right now we're going to... We went from the... The indie devs, the indie uh, block producers, you know, uh, just starting out, launching the chain, and they didn't know what the hell was going on. Everyone didn't know what the hell was going on, but they were the top dogs at the time. Then you see the exchanges starting to slowly creep in, and now, as of right now, they're the top dogs. And now we're starting to see big corporations starting to creep in. They got capital. It, it really wouldn't be hard if they want to be a block producer, just buy a bunch of EOS tokens and vote themselves in if this is the way we're going to go. Uh, and I feel like we're going to have corporate uh, entities taking the block producer spot soon. I think we're just going through little uh, phases in this growth of EOS that I don't think a lot of us are actually taking note. Even myself, I'm starting to see the transition. It, it was from indie, indie block producers. Uh, and we all remember those days. Those were, the, I think, one of the best days of uh, EOS. It was the very beginning, just before the mainnet launch. It was so much excitement. I think there was a lot of kumbaya going on. Um, it, it's like the first blockchain I've seen everyone around the world working together to launch something. i never seen that once in the years of being in, in crypto where that much effort and coordination took place. So I, I was really impressed. Um, but those days are kind of phased out. You know, we now have exchanges. Let's be blunt about it. It's exchange, the exchange season. <laughs> But I think those days are going to be phased out as well when you start seeing these big corporate companies such as Google, Apple, um, who knows, Uber, Lyft, all these corporations start coming in and want a piece of the pie. Um, I think that's where, after that, I don't know what's going to be after the corporations, maybe governments. I kind of, that's where I might have to like pull away a little bit if we start having government entities. Uh, running as block producers, but who knows? Maybe it actually might make things better in the world. Um, I don't know. I never really put too much thought on that. I mean, imagine China or Russia and the U.S. and uh, Afghanistan and uh, all these other places around the world being a block producer. I'm not sure how that will work exactly, if that will be a good or a bad thing, but I, that's probably the next step after corporations start uh, getting phased out. But that's just my two cents. Um, I am excited to actually see some positive news that we haven't seen so much. 
I'm going to say great news, but something that uh, made the price jump in a long time when it came to EOS. I still do love my EOS.io sister chains. I, 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 I think I think they're not going anywhere. I just don't think not they're not going to be as noticed as soon as ES because of the market cap. I mean, EOS has a ridiculous market cap. It's on page one of coin market cap. It's going to take time for these other uh, sister chains to get to the, that level. Uh, unless they got hella backing and hella partners, then yes, it speeds them up to the first page. But uh, we got time. But I, I see a lot of them do a lot of awesome things that I wish EOS was doing. Um, as far as making things a little bit simpler, you know, it's kind of it's cumbersome, man. I wish EOS wasn't so complicated. <laughs> you know, I would love to get so many more people involved in EOS, but it's just uh, the way the way you have to interact with it. It's just it's intimidating for someone who has no idea what the hell they're doing. Um, I wish it wasn't so Rex this and CPU that and and and, and net this and this and that and stake it and then change your keys and then it's just a lot for a new person to deal with you know especially if they you know maybe play with bitcoin where you just yeah, send your money to this you save your prior keys and there you go even that's kind of you know taunting a little bit for new people because they might lose their money now imagine adding all this other stuff uh maybe that's a, a hurdle that we might need to really address to bring on more adoption is make it simpler make it i don't know how we'll do it but it kind of needs to be done um in order to see real adoption of real masses coming to the u.s blockchain and not just enthusiasts we don't want enthusiasts anymore we got enthusiasts we already have enthusiasts we're all enthusiasts we need new fresh fresh blood in the, in the u.s community people who have no idea uh how this works i think the best way of doing that is just make it simpler because it's 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 complicated and uh you know dan's a very smart person he's brilliant I just think he thinks everyone else is on the same page in the round of the world. Um, I, 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 I question some things when he's talking sometimes. I, you know, um, I think once he said at the beginning of uh, EOS, before the mainland launch, he said uh, he doesn't think anybody is inherently evil or something. <laughs> I thought in my head, come to my part of the world, come to my neighborhood, come to my city. Um, yeah, I think. I think that's, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, once he said that, kind of like, you know, he kind of has to come out into the, into the world a little bit. I think he's just kind of looking at it from perspective, a one way, one sided perspective, a lot of the stuff. He's a smart dude. I can never take that away from Dan. That, that, he's beyond my comprehension at times, but sometimes I kind of look at things he says and I'm like, wait a minute, man. Um, but yeah, I, I think we could uh, get Dan out of his shell a little bit more, get Brandon out of his shell a little bit more, um, market more, market, you know, that I remember uh, we were talking about some marketing, what happened with that. Uh, as far as voice, someone asked me, how come I never talk about voice? And this is a while back, and I never really addressed it, so I'm going to talk about it now. Um, I'm not really discussing voice because it has nothing to do with EOS. Um, that's the truth. I, you know, when they said they were going to launch on EOS, Great, yeah, I was getting ready to talk it up, um, to be head first into it. But once they are doing their own little thing and no one's really sure, I'm not really gonna. It's a this totally different project. That's like me talking about, um, I don't know, uh, Monero. Randomly start talking about Monero, and I predominantly talk about EOS. Is is why it's two different projects. Um, I bought EOS tokens at, during the ICO. I didn't buy voice tokens. So until voice has some way of working with the EOS blockchain, then okay, great. Then I would start talking about it. But to me, they're two different projects. I, you know, voice is voice, EOS is EOS, and they, they merge and cooperate, then great. I would start talking about it. But um, that's just my stance on it. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, guys, I'm going to end it here because I actually have family coming they actually staying here right now, and uh, it's a lot of in and out activity. And I, I this video just went smoothly. I don't want someone busting through that door like the Kool Aid Man and messed me all up. So I'm gonna end it here, guys. I'm gonna catch you in the next one. See ya.